Hey everybody, Wally Renee here and welcome. Join me as we venture beyond the scan and, and try to take a deep dive into what you could do with that data. You know, those of you who have intraoral scanners or desktop scanners, there's so much power behind what you could do with that 3D information. Uh, whether it's throwing it into digital smile design or um, merging it with the CBCT for implant planning, 3D printing, duplicate or replica dentures, um, bringing it into a more powerful and robust software like PlanCAD Premium or ExoCAD and doing um, provisional hybrid prosthetics and final implant designs, um, creating wax-up models, shell provisionals, um, all those things we're going to talk about in this series. Um, but the very first thing that we're going to discuss is something that's kind of complicated and it's actually not really something that's a, a easy workflow to do. And in, in ExoCAD or PlanCAD Premium, and that is duplicate dentures. So the, the way that it works is a patient comes in and they have a denture that they like, or maybe they have a denture that doesn't fit very well, but they've had it for many years and you reline it. And what you do with that is you scan it in with your scanner. Um, in this case, we're scanning a denture with the Emerald S, but it could be any scanner, as long as you have a good quality STL. Now, how are we going to get a duplicate split file out of PlanCAD Premium? Um, so the way we're going to set this case up is we're going to design these as shell pontics. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and sh hold shift and select first molar to first molar because this is a particular denture that I'm duplicating has um, just first molar, first molar. So I'm gonna find the scan of the denture. So let me just go ahead and find that on my desktop here. Okay, so here's the denture and how it comes in. What we're gonna do now is you set the model orientation. So you wanna be looking kind of straight down the occlusal plane. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and skip Smile Creator because we're duplicating. We're not making any changes to this denture. And it's gonna ask you to go ahead and throw in some teeth. And it's not really critical. Here we're in chain mode. And first I get my molars and then I lock those in with the red dots. Then I get my cuspids lined up. But we're not actually gonna use these teeth. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna kinda of hack the system here in a minute. So I'm gonna lock that canine in right there by hitting the red ball, lock that one in. And then I'm gonna just move um, eight and nine into place. You could hold control to rotate um, the teeth. You could mirror image if you wanted to by hitting symmetry. So what you do to one side does to the other. But I'm not really trying to re-wax this case up. I'm going to show you. We just have to get them kind of roughly in the in the correct area because we're not going to actually use these ponic bases for anything. So we're just going to hit next. So now it's going to ask you to click the teeth that you want to copy. In this instance, um, it didn't fully get that molar tooth, so I'm going to retry the automatic and click a different spot. I like to get it in one click. So here we go, and it, what its software is doing now is it's actually separating out those denture teeth from the monolithic scan. Okay, and so once again, we set this case up as shell pontics. And so what it's going to do, it's going to create a ridge lap ponic for each tooth that I click. It's pretty good at selecting teeth. If it didn't get the full area, you could go back and edit that black line. There's balls on those um, lines that are editable um, morph points that you could go ahead and tweak. However, I do find that it gets it almost all the time in a single click. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to ignore those yellow teeth, which we just kind of really put there to not confuse the software. And we're going to go to our full anatomic wax up and we're going to unselect those. Okay, so we're going to remove those. And all we want is the replica teeth. Okay, so there's the replica teeth, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my denture, and you'll see perfect ridge lap ponics 
have been created. So I'm going to right click and hit save scene as, and I'm going to just go ahead and go down to, I'm going to call these teeth. And I'm going to go ahead and go down to STL file. Okay, save it somewhere on my desktop. Okay. Visible objects only. And then what you're going to want to click, depending on your export and portabilities and what you do from here on out, you're either going to hit use original um, orientation or use default. I, for this I'm going to use original so that this way it's matched to the original denture STL file. I'm going to hit don't save. That's all we needed from that. So then I'm going to immediately open up a, another PlanCAD premium window. And I'm going to go ahead and go to load STL. And we're going to trick the computer here. I'm going to load that tooth model. And we're just going to call it Ponic. Okay. Because once again, there is no copy denture feature in ExoCAD, PlanCAD Premium. So now what you could do um, is you could go ahead and down here and hit um, Merge Wax Up in Expert Mode under Tools. Find the teeth again and click OK. It should come in perfectly matched to the original model. So now we're going to trick the computer and we're going to go ahead and right click on that and hit create wax up. And now we're going to be able to click on that and hit freeform. Okay, so what you could do in this case is you could edit the ponics if you wanted to to create some mechanical retention. I'm just going to show you that real quick, even, real quick even though I don't use it on this case because this case the denture base is really thin and if I add these it's just going to poke holes. But if you had a little bit thicker of a denture base um, you could come in and you could add a little bit of, you know, kind of ovate sites that would key into the denture base when you go ahead and Boolean the teeth from the, the actual denture. So just to show you that real quick, I'm just using the add feature um, on all the way strong and just adding these. But I won't actually use this for this particular case, but I'm just showing you guys because a lot of people like a lot of mechanical retention. So that's what that would look like. All right, so um, you would export that as an STL file and go ahead and make a gingival base on it. But in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a gingival offset on the original tooth file. So basically what we're doing is we're creating a spacer. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, set my path of insertion looking kind of straight down the necks of the teeth. And I'm gonna go ahead and set about a 200 micron gap um, that's how loose I like my teeth to fit in the base after I cut the teeth from the denture. And it's going to go ahead and create that at that path of insertion. Okay, so there's the offset model that we'll, we, we will use to cut the out of the denture to make room for our teeth. And what we're going to do now Let's see here, we're going to we have to make that solid because if we're going to cut something in ExoCAD, do a Boolean difference or a Boolean union, it really likes completely closed models. Okay, so see how that's kind of an open shell there? It won't cut properly from the denture base in a later step that I'm going to show you guys. So um, we're just going to go ahead and save that as offset model. And then we're gonna have to bring it back in and, and seal it off. We'll just bring it back in as another mesh and then we will um, edit, me edit mesh and seal it off. Make it solid model. So we'll go ahead and load. Once again, we're in expert mode. We're gonna load um, Just call it a jaw scan. We'll find that original offset model. And it brings it right back into the proper orientation. And then we're going to just go ahead and click it and go to edit, scan data. Make sure everything is, is gold color. So here you can see I don't have um, everything highlighted. So just circle everything again. And once it's fully 
um, this yellow color, you go ahead and hit close holes and it's going to make that a solid model. There we go. Okay, so when you when you have you have your um, solid offset base now, you have to save that as a as an offset model. I'm just going to overwrite the original hollow offset that I had. This seems complicated, but a whole copied entry takes 15 minutes. This is not sped up at all. So we we're saving that um, scene as an STL. So now we're going to go and we're going to go back to our denture. And the way that we're going to get our denture back in there and get it editable is we're going to call it another wax up scan. And we're going to load our original denture. Okay, so <clears throat> just click OK. Okay, so we have our denture and we have our offset. The, the denture comes in merged. Um, the way that we need to be, get it to be back editable is we're going to have to delete the reconstruction on it. All right, so we're deleting the reconstruction. One more time, click OK. There, now when you click it, just hit Create Wax Up, click OK, and then go to Freeform. So now we have this yellow editable object. Go to Attachment, Subtract, and go all the way down and find your solid offset model that you saved. Okay. And hit apply. And what it's going to do is a Boolean difference operation of the offset model with the 200 micron gap at the proper path of insertion from the denture base, from the denture. And here you go. Hit OK. Let's take a look at it. Not a lot of mechanical retention on this one, but it could be as, as much as you want based on how you edit those ponics. Once again, this was a paper thin denture, so I didn't, I didn't have any room to add a lot of mechanical retention. So there you go, guys. Super easy, actually, to do copy dentures in ExoCAD, PlanCAD Premium um, with just the Pontic shell provisional module. So super cool. A lot of you guys want to know exactly what is PlanCAD Premium. Well, it's full-blown ExoCAD with a PlanMecha twist on it. So what does that mean? Well, if you have an Emerald S scanner and you scan a Remexus, all the case information immediately transfers over to ExoCAD, including the color scan files, the margins that you might have marked in PlanCAD Easy, along with the ability to select materials for the 30S, 40S, 40, and um, plan mill, 50S, puck mill. Also, all the CAM outputs um, and files have been designed to work almost uh, mindlessly and synergistically with the Plymeca mills so that you don't have to do a lot of thinking, tinkering, and um, nesting and all that kind of stuff. It's designed for easy, seamless um, bounce around between Plymeca technologies.